pricing as well as the determination of the value similarly uh, we looked at uh, futures and also options again various uh, models for valuing the different types of options the options on stocks the options on bonds the options on uh, interest rates and even interest rate caps and floors so now we will look at the other set of derivative instruments uh, which are typically called as swaps and just as a basic uh, introduction into the swap we know that in a normal swap contract a and b both of them agree to exchange a set of cash flows so probably uh, the most common kind of instruments are the typical interest rate swap wherein wherein one party agrees to pay a fixed rate and tries to receive a floating rate or vice versa and we also have the scenarios of currency swap as well as equity swap of course there are so many uh, others uh, apart from this also like total return swap commodity return swap there are uh, so many such kind of instruments all we are talking of as a commonality in all these instruments is both sides of the transaction are typically the cash flows itself so that is what is the basic introduction so let's uh, for this swaps also for each of these swaps we will look at the pricing how do i decide the no arbitrage price for the swap and once the price is decided uh, somewhere after the initiation of the contract what is the value of the swap to either of the parties so that is what we will look at for each of these different kinds of swaps so let's get into it whenever we talk about initially we will uh, talk about interest rate swaps right when we talk about an interest rate swap and again the price as well as the value so the price in an interest rate swap is nothing but the fixed interest rate so when a and b are getting into an interest rate swap where generally okay if a is agreed to pay b a fixed rate and b is agreeing to pay a a floating rate when we talk about the price of the interest rate swap it is not in dollar terms it is in this fixed rate terms so whatever is this fixed rate that is what we call as the price of no arbitrage price of a swap so in a typical fixed floating kind of transactions whatever is the fixed rate that is what we call as the price of the swap and in case of floating we just need to mention what is this floating rate probably a refer any reference rate like a libor or libor plus some basis point something like that but you don't need to quote it whereas when it comes to fixed rate that rate has to be quoted and that amount will be constant remains fixed over the entire life of the swap that is one of the prime reasons we uh, we we call that particular price as we call that particular rate as the price of an interest rate swap and when it comes to the value of the swap generally we look at it from the perspective of a fixed payer so when we talk about a fixed payer then what is it we are he will be receiving floating floating cash inflows present value minus fixed cash outflows present value so if we are looking at it from the perspective of floating payer he will receive fixed receipt fixed cash flows are received 
and floating cash flows are paid the difference between the two at any point in time is what we call as the value of the swap and generally when we use the word market rate swap it means when we use the word market rate swap it means that the fixed rate is decided in such a way that the value is zero both to the fixed payer as well as to the floating payer on the day of initiation of the contract but wherever that particular rate that particular uh, 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 difference is not zero difference is not zero then we don't call it as a market rate swap we call it as off market swap means one party just like an off market forward where one party directly has an advantage over the other party on the day of initiation of the on the, of the agreement so that only in those cases we will talk about the off market uh, swaps as we have to um, uh, as we come across off market swaps in uh, uh, in the next uh, in the next slide we will be talking about uh, the off market swaps also which is nothing but on the day of initiation of the contract itself one party has a straight forward advantage over the other and uh, but generally the in normal conditions the value of the swap at initiation is zero and with the change in the interest rates the values also can keep changing making one party gain and one party lose during the period of the swap now this is an interesting uh, aspect wherein i can try to build a swap with other derivative instruments the exact same transaction of the swap can very well be created with other derivative instruments let's see this when we are talking about a payer swap here always we will use the words called payer swap and receiver swap whenever we use payer swap it means pay fixed whenever we use the word payer swap it means pay fixed receive floating so this is what we call as uh, payer swap and whenever we talk about uh, receiver swap we will talk about receive fixed and pay floating now what we are talking of is i can create this particular impact by using various other securities out of that you you look at one of this i do a borrowing at a fixed let's say x is the amount which i am borrowing at a fixed rate i have done a borrowing at a fixed rate some particular x and i have invested this x at a floating rate or i have lent this x at a floating rate to other party now what are the transactions that are happening on the same value x i will pay a fixed rate on this amount and i will receive a floating rate on this amount at regular intervals of time so even if the payment intervals are also same the payer swap is nothing but it's borrowing it at borrowing the same notional amount at the fixed rate and lending it at the floating rate same way when i talk about the receiver swap i'm talking about borrow at floating rate and invest or lend at a fixed rate so this is uh, this means a swap can very well be created using two different <coughs> two different bond instruments also a simple uh, swap can be created 
using two different bond instruments wherein uh, for the same notional amount I am borrowing at a particular uh, at a fixed or a floating on uh, lending it the other way giving rise to a payer swap or a receiver swap then the next thing we are talking about a payer swap as a series of FRS okay how does the forward rate agreement work we are talking about in a forward rate agreement a particular time period right and I fix the interest rate let's say at 8% whatever may be the market rate on this market rate is nothing but the floating rate whatever the market rate at this point I will be paying this fixed rate of 8% only which is nothing but the characteristic of FRA then what is happening in case of a swap in case of a swap I am not making one payment I am probably making a series of payments but all of them I am paying 8% only whatever the market rate at this point whatever the market rate at this point I am paying this 8% only at each of the periods what does that mean to me this 8% which is the fixed rate in case of a swap it is decided here only on the day of initiation of the swap itself whereas when we are talking about an FRA for this payment generally I decide the fixed rate here for this payment generally I decide the fixed rate here mean based on the rate that is prevalent in the next period I am fixing my fixed rate so that becomes a market forward means based on the market rate I am deciding the fixed interest rate whereas when I am setting it here or when I am saying I am deciding the FRA or uh, the pay a fixed payment of 8% at each of these uh, periods I am deciding it here itself means when I come here the, the when I come here and try to find out uh, what is the uh, what would be the FRA va price it may be more than 8% or may be less than 8% because depending on what is uh, the what is the LIBOR rates at that point we decide what would be the price of this FRA so, but deciding it at this moment itself means the FRAs whatever we are creating we are calling them as off market FRAs where the fixed interest rate is more or less known right at the beginning of the swap itself and it's the same rate that is getting applied for the entire period of the swap so if at all I have to build a payer swap using a series of FRAs the only thing I have to compromise is the rate I have to fix right at the beginning of the swap itself and generally what people do is they go for different maturity FRAs okay this is a three period uh, three month maturity FRA six month FRA nine month FRA so whatever is the rate okay let's say the three month FRA rate is eight percent six month FRA rate is eight point five percent and uh, the nine month FRA rate uh, or nine month FRA rate is nine percent based on all these things I will find out the present value of all these FRAs and take the average probably it may work out at 8.5% so then I will decide the, the fixed rate for the entire duration for the FRA is 8.5% uh, that is how I am deciding the swap rate present value of the average FRA rate is what is getting uh, created as the swap rate.